Welcome back everybody. One of the final installments of the rebuilding and refurbishing of the 204R automatic transmission that's going to be going into my 1972 old Vista Cruiser. We have a whole assortment of parts that are going to be going back on today. Such as valve body gaskets, an upper and a lower run, the separator plate with holes drilled in it, of course all the lined up and bolts that go on, they're all different lengths. Always good to line stuff up, keep things in order. And, of course we have our valve body over here, which I've made the modifications in. Just to show you, I promise you I would show you some of the dirt that would be left over from when I cleaned out the valve body. All this dirt and sludge was what was inside the valve body of this transmission still. We saw how it looked clean the last time, but it really wasn't. Kind of interesting, because then this stuff could be circulating throughout your new transmission. And this is why they say you should really replace torque converters as well, too, because the torque converter can attract and hold a lot of uh, that debris and goop inside of it. And as we discussed, this one it overheated pretty bad, so I'm sure this one is just ripe full of some pretty bad sludge and stuff and to reuse it would be a pretty bad thing. Cheap insurance to buy a new torque converter. So let's get started. I have a couple of pieces I just wanted to show you. Over here we have the throttle assembly. This is a very very critical part of this transmission. It pushes against this valve in the valve body. This gives a rise and fall in pressure of the transmission which allows the clutches and the band to clamp harder per a given throttle, like the more throttle you have the harder a clutch or band will apply. If this cable that this device attaches to is left off it will burn out the transmission in very short order because um, the manufacturer wasn't really too smart and by making that the cable would be off it would be an extremely low pressure mod. But anyway here's a little check ball that works in conjunction with it when it moves up and down it's the little rod that attaches to this assembly. Anyway, let's get rid of this over here for the timing so we can put the valve body back on. A few things to watch out for, as always with these things. We have a servo assembly, or excuse me, I'm an accumulator assembly. This is what has a cushioning effect for the second gear shift in these transmissions. Now by putting on a, a slightly different string with a, with a different hardness um, as a supply in the shift kit, it helps the piston to move not as fast, so that way you'll get a harder shift. This one over here is for the, uh, um, it's for shifting to your third and fourth. It does much the same thing with the spring, working against hydraulic pressures. Now of course we want to start with putting I'm um, our gas gun, but I just wanted to show you really quick. There's various check balls inside of these transmissions. There's six that are put back in. A stock one would have seven, but this one only requires six for this particular shift kit. There's one that's been omitted over here, which I believe is for the uh, second, uh, excuse me, uh, the, the third accumulator inside the transmission. So that'll help to give it a harder shift going into uh, uh, third gear. So we want to start with our separator gaskets, or valve body gaskets. They're marks so you can't mix them up. This one over here has a C, which stands for case. So this one's going to fit up against the case. And um, the book says you should use a couple of dowels to help to align these paper gaskets. But unfortunately, we don't have the proper size dowel. So we have to make do with just these little things I made with a couple of pieces of old um, uh, wiring that I had kicking around. So it helps to hold things relatively in a straight line. We can put the separator plate on now. Down like that. Just make sure that everything is relatively aligned, or actually really decently aligned, because you don't want to have gaskets pinching and things getting ruined. Although you can jiggle things around once you start getting the um, valve body on. Now, instructions over here call for that we have to put in three valve bodies. You see where, where it's marked C, C, and C over here. Correspondingly, if we put them back into our valve body, it needs a little bit bigger one that's, uh, that's applying the kit to the middle one. Now to hold these things in when you flip them upside down, you just have them held in with some Vaseline. Never ever use grease on these things because um, grease 
will never dissolve properly and ends up just bunging up and plugging up passages inside the transmission. And that's not too friendly on the clutch plate material or the band material either. So I'll just use some Vaseline and that just disperses in the oil with no problem. Now we'll put the camera down so we can just get the sink properly aligned. The valve body putting it on. I can find a spot, I should have thought of this before, but let's see, let's see what we can do. There we go, I think we got it. A little bit sideways, but it'll do. We want to put on our gasket that's marked valve body. Again, put it over the makeshift dowels. There we go. Now we can place this on the valve body itself. Turn it over gently because even though it's being held in with Vaseline, we still don't want those check balls to be moving around and possibly falling off for us. Important step. Our, um, our selector lever rod for the, for what's called a manual valve. This is what gives you your park reverse neutral drive, overdrive two and one. Not necessarily in that order. You have to make sure this thing is indexed properly. There we go. Better trying to get things to align without them pinching on you. Patience is a virtue as always with these things. Allows you free movement, gives you all your ears to make sure it works properly before you put it on completely, the screws and bolts. That's basically it. Matter of properly tightening up nuts and bolts and making sure everything is held in properly and torquing it down to proper specifications is very, very important. Anyway, thanks for sticking along for these movies over here and I it's a little bit crude, I, I mean the, the filming methods, but I certainly hope I was able to show you folks out there just a little bit how these things work. Hope you've been enjoying them. Thanks very much.